So this is a video to help us with the binomial probability distribution. And um, in order to be binomial or a binomial probability distribution, you have to go through the following requirements with you know every problem that you do. Identify it as binomial first, and then you can calculate with binomial. So the first requirement is that you have a fixed number of trials. And that fixed number is represented by lowercase n. Um, you have independent trials. That means that one is not affecting another. You have two outcomes. Success or failure. So S, capital S, will be success. Capital F is failure. So either success or failure. And success doesn't necessarily, you know, represent a better outcome. It just represents the probability that you're trying to find. So, like, if my two outcomes are heads or tails with flipping a coin, and I want to determine probability of tails, success would be tails. Failure would be heads. If I want to determine the probability of getting heads, then success would be heads and the failure would be tails. So, you know, success is not necessarily the better scenario. It's just the probability that you're looking for. And then the last requirement is that the probability of success is equal for all our, um, trials. So it stays constant. If this is my case, and, and um, probability of success is represented by small p, um, and probability of failure is the complement of that, so it's found by 1 minus p, and it's represented by lowercase q. Small p, probability of success. Small q, probability of failure. Um, and x represents the number of successes. Now, if you have these requirements met, then you can calculate the probability of this many x successes in n trials by using binomial case, which is the formula nr, uh, sorry, nx. And this is just um, a combinations formula. I'll show you what I mean by that. p to the x, q to the n minus x. Or, if you've seen it this way, ncr, oh, I keep putting r, nc, so p of x, is ncx times p to the x times q to the n minus x. Um, if you're using your calculator, graphing calculator, then the little trick is binome pdf. And the order in which you input is n, p, x. So I'll probably use it with the um, formula and with the calculator. I'll show you, you know, both. So let's assume that we have... Um, Let's say a test with 10 questions, 10 multiple choice question tests. And you don't know anything on this test. You're guessing, you're randomly guessing on each question. Randomly guessing per question. <laughs> so um, because it's multiple choice, you have, let's say, four outcomes, four possible answers, meaning, you know, A, B, C, or D. And, all right, let's see if, based on that alone, let's see if I have a binomial probability distribution case. So this is my abbreviation for binomial probability distribution. So if I have a, a 10 question, a 10 multiple choice question test, 10 questions, each one has four possible answers. I'm randomly guessing on each question. Let's see if I have these requirements met. Do I have a fixed number of trials? Well, yeah, I have 10 total questions. So my first requirement is met. I have a fixed number of trials. And in this case, that number of trials is 10. So n, small n, is represented by 10 in this case. The second requirement are, you know, independent trials. So me guessing on one question, does it affect me randomly guessing on the next one? No, right? I'm randomly guessing. I'm just randomly picking A through D. So I have independent trials. Um, the third requirement is two outcomes, success or failure. So do I have two outcomes? Well, yes, I have. I'm either going to get it right or wrong. So I'm going to define success in this case as the correct answer. And I'm going to define failure as the incorrect answer. And again, you know, success is not necessarily the better outcome and failure the, you know, 
worst outcome, just we're going to end up determining probability of correct answers. So my success is correct, my failure is incorrect. And always define your success and failure before you continue because the fourth requirement is the probability of success equal for each case. So small p. Well, the probability of success is equal for each case because p, small p, the probability of success. Well, success is defined as correct answer. The probability that I get the correct answer is one out of four because only one out of these four um, possible answers is correct. Therefore, the probability of failure, which is one minus p, is three out of four, right? So I have three incorrect answers out of four total. So the probability of getting the correct answer, if I'm randomly choosing the answer per question is one fourth and it's the same for, question, for each question. And the probability of failure is three fourths because I only have four choices. If there were you know, A, B, C, D, or E, then the probability of success would be one fifth and the probability of failure would be four fifths. But I only have four outcomes, so four possible answers. So again, here we are. Now, all four requirements are met, therefore, probability, binomial probability distribution is the situation, and I can use the methods that I have for binomial cases. So let's say that I want to find, now that it's binomial, the probability that I get exactly um, four correct answers. Right? So I have 10 possible questions. So again, I'm going to write this n was 10, small p was 1 fourth and small q was 3 fourths. Now, I want the probability of getting exactly 4 correct out of the 10. That means, because I define success to be a correct answer, I want 4 successes in 10 trials. This is my x in my formula. So, <clears throat> I have um, n, c, x, times p to the x times q, to the n minus x. I'm just plugging it into my formula. Now this is a little bit more complicated to do by hand than it is to do with the calculator. I'll show you by hand. This is a combinations formula. It says take 10 factorial and divide by 10 minus 4 factorial times 4 factorial then take 1 fourth to the fourth and 3 fourths to the sixth. So if I'm doing it by hand this is 10 factorial over 6 factorial <laughs> times 4 factorial. And I mean, I'm going to end up plugging this into a calculator anyway. Um, so if I use the calculator trick, this is also the same thing as binome PDF. And again, remember that I told you guys um, the order in which I do that. NPX. So my total outcomes is 10. My probability of success is one fourth, comma. My x is, what was x? Four. Make sure you put the commas in. Um, by known PDF, if you are unfamiliar with where to look for it, it's um, in your calculator. You press second and then vars. And I could do um, a video showing you that also, but second vars. This is also on um, TI 83 or 84. And when you do second vars, you just scroll down until you see binomial PDF. And then you press enter. And then it'll ask you for the number of trials, P, and then X. And then it'll look like this after you press enter. So, you know, try that out. It's located under second vars. Um, when you do that, so let's do 10, comma, the commas above the number 7 on your calculator, 1 fourth, and 4, we get approximately, I'm going to round to the nearest thousandth, 0 0.146, or in percentage form, 14.6%. Okay, so if I do this whole thing out and plug it into my calculator and get a decimal, I'll get the same thing as if I do binomial PDF. Binomial PDF is just a little bit faster, as you can see. Um, let's do another one. I'll keep this the same. I'll do a couple more. P was 1 fourth, Q was 3 fourths, right? And I want the probability of getting, um, let's just do nine questions correct out of the 10. I want you to think about whether that probability would be high or low. I mean, if I'm randomly guessing on um, a 10 question test, the probability that I get nine of them right should be very low. So let's see if I'm correct. So 
In this case, because I want nine questions correct, these are my number of successes. That's my X in my formula. Um, NCR or NCX, so 10C9 times P, which is 1 fourth to the X, which is 9, times Q, which is 3 fourths to the N minus um, X, 10 minus 9. So if you're using you know, the formula, a little bit more work, times 9 factorial, um, 1 fourth to the ninth, 3 fourths to the first, or the calculator, um, oops, which is, or the calculator, which is binome PDF, N, P, X, this is 9. I'm going to round, so again, under second vars, go down to binome PDF. N is 10, comma, 1 fourth, comma, 9. <laughs> I get 2 point, ooh, 2.861 e, which is times 10 to the negative fifth. So that little e in your calculator looks like this, 2.861 e negative 5. This is your calculator's way of telling you scientific notation. And if you have a negative value here that tells you to move the decimal to the left five places, two, three, four, five. This is the value of this probability in decimal form. So we expected it to be low because if I'm randomly guessing on 10 questions, it is very unlikely that I'm going to get nine of the 10 correct because I know nothing on this test. So the probability of that happening is extremely low. Um, let's say that I ask for the probability of... Um, <clears throat> Let's do at least one correct. Hopefully you guys know that the probability of at least one is one minus the probability that I get none correct, which is one minus P of zero. So I just have to find P of zero. And I'm gonna use the calculator version binome, because it's faster, PDF. This is zero um, successes in N trials and I'm still dealing with 10 trials and the probability of success is one fourth and all that. So 10 trials, one fourth. This time I want zero correct answers because I want the probability of none correct here. Um, second vars down to binome PDF, 10 comma one fourth comma zero, 0 0.056 rounded to the nearest um, thousandth. I get 0 0.944, or in, in percentage form, 94.4%, which looks like a very high probability. And I expect that. So I'm saying that on this 10-question test, where I have four possible answers, I'm randomly guessing on each one. The probability that I get at least one correct out of the 10, and that could be one correct, or two correct, or three, or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten, the probability that I get at least one of them correct is 94.4%, which is likely. I'm sure if you guys have guessed on any test, it is likely that if you guess on all your questions, you probably will get at least one of them correct. That does not mean that you are passing the test. That means that yeah, maybe you got one correct or maybe you got two correct or whatever. So I expected this to be a high probability. Um... I'll probably do one more really quick dealing with these complements. What if I ask for the probability of um, getting more than eight correct? Now this is out of a 10 question test. More than eight means nine or 10. So the or means addition. So I'm saying, well, if I want the probability of getting more than eight, not eight, more than eight, nine or 10 um, questions correct, that's the same thing as finding the probability of getting exactly 9 correct plus the probability of getting exactly 10 correct. So I'd have to do, in, if I'm using the calculator, binomial PDF twice. So binomial PDF for this number of successes, 10, 1 fourth, 9, plus binomial PDF for this many successes, 10, I'm running out of space, 1 fourth, 10. Um, if you're doing the formula, you'd have to do the formula twice here and here, with 9 being number of successes and 10 being number of successes, which is why the calculator is much faster. Um, 
And I would expect this to also, I'm going to do this on my calculator, I would expect this to also be a small value. Because again, if you think about it, um, I'm going to this test, I'm randomly guessing on 10 questions. And, you know, I'm saying the probability of getting, you know, at least eight of them correct. So nine or 10 out of the, out of the 10 correct, that's passing, that's almost an A. Well, that's an A or above, actually, more than eight correct. Um, that's unlikely if I, I knew nothing on this test and I'm randomly guessing on every question. So um, I'll do each of these separately. So binomial PDF for nine successes, 10 comma one fourth comma nine. So if I round this, again, I think we did this before, 2.861 times 10 to the negative five plus, <laughs> I expect 10 um, out of the 10 correct to be wrong. Um, this one right here, this would represent 100% on this test. I expect that to be even smaller than this. 10 comma one fourth comma 10. Yeah, so this is 9.537 times 10 to the negative seven. This is, I mean, almost zero. So if I add those together, um, 10, yeah. I am expecting this to be a very small probability because it's highly unlikely that I would go to a test and randomly guess on every problem and get <laughs> at least eight of them right, or more, sorry, more than eight correct. 2.956 times 10 to the negative five, which is 0 0.1234 Very, very small. If I change it to, decimal, to percentage form, moving the decimal two places to the right, zero, zero, 2956%. This is a very, very unlikely scenario. And that is what I expected because I don't expect to go to a test, randomly guess on 10 questions, and expect to get an A or higher. Well, a 90 or above, which is basically an A or 100. So make sure the probability makes sense with the situation.